Howdy. I'm Cyberax with Outlandishly Crafted. And today we're going to be talking about NPCs. Yeah, we are. Here we go. We've got some NPC right here. It's an NPC. And that's an NPC. And that's an NPC. They're just different NPCs. And actually, these aren't NPCs. These are traders, see? But they look like NPCs. You wouldn't notice the difference. So here we go. We walk up to them. And you can see they've got a different skin and a different geo. Let's see if we can find one with different geo. A different geo. They have different animations and different stuff. So let's jump in and see how do we do it. First off, you can see that you got that chatter box, and you've got your what to do box, and you've got your select box. And what's happening is when you select one of these, the behavior pack is changing inside your behavior file. So inside your behavior file, which you don't have to have one if you're doing the Minecraft, if you're just you know working and changing the Minecraft NPC, but you need to know what's going on. So in here, in your NPC component, is this list of skins. And you can have lots and lots and lots. You can add more, you can take away more. And you can see some of mine look the same because I just didn't have a whole bunch of them. So you can build this list. Or, if you're not doing a BP, then you would just use the vanilla list. So the vanilla file has the same thing. And so you would go in to the vanilla NPC, and you would go look for the NPC component. And then you would see here that there's a list of 19 different variants. So you can have 19 different skins and geos in it without having a behavior pack. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, the first thing you need to do is inside your RP, your resource pack entity file, you need to declare all of those skins, so those textures and their paths. Then you need to go in and declare all of the geos and their geo the model, so the geos identifier. Okay. Now here's where the power comes in, is in the render controller, then we come in and we declare all of those inside an array. So we set up an array for our geos and for our textures, and we declare each of those in the same order so that when zero is used here, zero is used here. So this geo goes with this texture. When one is used, one is used. If you were going to use all of these, or say you're going to use the top four for one geo and the bottom four for another geo, then you would just have to, re you know, this would be variant A for B and variant A for C and variant A for or you could do by number three. So you can still use them back and forth. You can have multiple skins for the same geo, or you can make a geo for each skin. It doesn't matter, it's all up to you. And with the, the vanilla one, you can go to 19. So you could have 19 of these. Each one can be different. The thing that matters is the array for the geo and the array for the texture, these need to match. So variant A and variant A, if that's the geo and that's the skin, they need to be in slot zero. When the behavior changes, it's changing to a variant, right? So you say variant eight. So it comes over here and it says variant eight, which would be seven, it starts at zero. So we're here. H, 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 and then this guy goes to your resource pack, calls that file, and calls that geo by its identifier. So that's really it. You go in, you, this in this case for identifier, if you're gonna do Minecraft, it'd be Minecraft colon NPC. Now, if each of your um, 
geos has a different material need, then you'd have to set up a different material for each. You could set up a different render controller for each, same thing. So those are all options that go into the render controller and you can set up other arrays and other stuff in here. So if you would like to make an MPC with more skins and more options and custom geos and whatever you want, uh, that's how you do it. I am CyberX with Outlandishly Crafted, and if you would like to see more guides like this, we could definitely use some tips, we could use some financial funding, um, Patreon subscriptions, with all of the tightening of everything and how many people need help, it takes a lot of work to do all this stuff, so if you have the means and you would like to help us out, please check out the website, outlandishlycrafted.com. Check us out on Twitch. Check us out on Patreon. Uh, you can always use Vimeo, whatever. But if you can help us out, that'd be great. If you'd like to suggest other guides, you can suggest them in the comments, or you can jump over to the Blockbench Discord. I'm normally in the Bedrock Help area, and you can post a comment or request in there. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else you need or you have problems doing this, put a comment down below. You rock.